All right. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about the two times I've had passengers show me guns in the car. So the first time, it was a Tuesday. It was like 12.30 in the afternoon. I picked up this guy over in Alexandria. And it's an older townhouse, row house type of area, okay? And uh, he comes up to the car, gets in, and he's got his hoodie up, and it's in the middle of the day. It's got his mask on, so you can't really see his face or anything. And uh, that's kind of the way it goes, every passenger. And uh, I said, hey, man, hey, how's it going? How you doing? He said, good. And I said, what are you up to today? You doing anything fun? He said, yeah, I'm going to the district and sell some dope. I said, okay. I said, all right. Sounds good. So uh, I go ahead and start driving off. And since he mentioned dope, I was asking him, so aren't you afraid of getting arrested, you know, because that kind of thing is kind of illegal still? At least I think it is. I don't know. I'm no expert. I'm not into the dope scene. I may look like a druggie, but I'm, I don't touch the stuff. So he's like, yeah, he said, no, it's no problem. It's all good. He said, Keith, they could frisk, the police could pull us over, frisk me on the hood of your car, pull my two ounces of bag or pull my weed out, pull my ID out. Run my ID. If my ID comes back clean, they got to give me my two ounces of weed back. I said, you're putting me on. What? They're going to give you your weed back? You know? Uh, and he's like, yeah. He said, it's, you can have up to two ounces of weed in Washington, D.C. And I'm like, well, we're not really in Washington, D.C. We're still kind of in Virginia, you know? But hey, you know, I don't care what people do. I'm not a police officer. I understand everybody is going through a tough time right now, myself included, right? And a lot of people are doing things that they have to do to survive. And uh, so, it's, you know, I'm not going to rat on the guy. I don't care what he's doing. I'm not going to judge him. So uh, we started talking about drugs, about weed, about a whole bunch of other stuff. And he turned out a really cool guy, really cool guy. And uh, so we get over into D.C., and we're in southeast somewhere and we pull up to this like five-story um, apartment complex and it's got like uh, this eight-foot black wrought iron fence going all the way around it and there's there's a, a parking area that I pull into and it's in the shape of a big U and there's like no cars around anywhere and I thought okay <laughs> This is one of those abandoned places, you know, because it looks sketchy as hell. I'm like, dude, I said, are you sure you want to go in here, man? I said, it looks dangerous. It looks like uh, nobody's even here. He said, it's all good, man. It's all good. I got it. And then he goes, hey, Keith. And I'm, yeah. And he goes, and I turn around and look at him. And uh, he goes, check it out. Check it. He lifts up his shirt. And when he does that, this guy has a Glock, like, I don't know, handgun. I don't know what, what it was, like a 9 millimeter or a 40 caliber, I don't know. Stuck in his waistband, in between his underwear and his waistband of his jeans. I'm like, oh, all right. I see you're going to be all right, man. I see, I see you got some protection. I said, all right, dude. I said, look, man. I said, uh, be real careful in there. I said, I'd like to talk to you again sometime. And, uh, you know, just just uh, be careful. He said, I'm good, man. I'm good. Thanks for being cool. And so he dipped out. And I'm sitting there, and I clo I'm closing out the call. And I'm just watching him go into this building, you know. And this is 12. Right now, it's probably like 1.10, you know, in the afternoon. And that was like 12.30 to 1.10 or so, somewhere around there. But man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go over there. I wouldn't go over there. Second time, okay? Second story. Different guy. Now it's like 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. And I'm in Suitland, Maryland, in a very challenging neighborhood. It's challenging for a lot of different reasons. Um, some would say it's a scary neighborhood. Some would say they would never be caught dead over there. And some, they go over there and end up dead, right? 
Second in the neighborhood. Real late at night. I get this ride, comes in. And I had just dropped somebody off, off over there. That's how this went down. I dropped somebody off, and before I could close the freaking app, they had added a ride to my queue. I'm all right, great. I got I'm already, this guy's already in here. So I, I pull over where this guy's at. Big dude swings open the door. Hey, Keith, how you doing, man? I said, good. How you doing? Jolly as hell, this guy, right? Big, big dude. And I said, good, man. How are you? And he goes, you remember me? I said, no. He goes, come on, man. I said, no, I don't remember you. I said, dude, I meet hundreds of people, hundreds of people. I don't remember you. He's, oh, don't say that. Don't say that. He's, and then he said, oh, all right, all right, all right. So he goes, Keith. And I, I'm like, you know, I'm like looking around. You know, this is kind of place where you keep your doors locked and you, you're constantly like watching, you know, for people to jump out on you because they will jump out on you. Uh, they'll get in the street, they'll pop out of cars. You know, it's not a very good neighborhood. He goes, hey, Keith. I said, yeah, man, yeah. And I'm driving. He, goes, he holds up this glove. He's got like a, a white motorcycle gloves on. And it's got little black patches, you know, and it's perforated for air vent. And he's, he's taking his, his glove and he's tapping it up against the plexiglass. This is plexiglass back here with uh, some lights. And I'll do another video. I'll show you how I made this thing. But he's got his glove, and he's like tapping it up on the glass. Hey, Keith, you know why I'm wearing these? I said, yeah, man. I said, because it's cold. He said, no, 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 no. Dude, he said, it's to keep the gunpowder residue off my hands. I'm like, man. I said, let me tell you something. Dude, I said, I am, and I said my age. Right? I'm not going to tell you because you're going you're gonna to pity me. You're going to feel sorry for me. I said, dude, I am, and I don't need this. I said, I've been through my share of biker fights, gang fights, street fights, bar fights, and uh, I just don't need this, man. I said, look, I make somewhere between $750 and $975 an hour. All I want to do is get through my shift. You know, I just want to get home at the end of the night. He says, it's all good. He's dude, don't worry about it. It's all good. It's all good. He goes, oh, yo. He says, hey, I just want to let you know, I'm going to make sure I get you and me up out this motherfucker. I said, okay. I said, well, that's good to know. I mean, we were in a bad place. <laughs> a bad place. He knew it. That's why he said that, right? And so I'm still driving. And I'm thinking, oh, great. This is great guy's worried about gunpowder residue on his hands and here I'm driving him in a, in a bad neighborhood trying to get him to a probably an equally bad neighborhood for his destination and uh, he goes hey Keith hit the light hit the light and I go oh okay it's so like I hit the light right pop the light on he goes look here look here I turn around he goes you see this and he had taken his hand and he opened up his jacket, right? And uh, in between his jacket and his top shirt or whatever, whatever it was, sweatshirt or whatever, he had a shoulder harness on with like a big ass revolver. And I saw the handle of the revolver and I saw the black of the gun. And I'm like, you know, this, this looked to me like a, like a 44 or a, like a 357 or something, like a big gun, like a six inch barrel type. And I'm like, oh, okay. I see you got us some protection. That's good. We may need it. And I'm nervously joking, right? And I'm like, this is not going to end well for Keith, you know? Keith may not see another shift driving, you know? He's like, uh, I told you. He said, I'm going to make sure I get you and me about this motherfucker. I said, all right. I said, well, I'm glad you brought protection. We may need it. And um, he said, no, nah, we'll, we'll be good. We'll be good, man. We'll be good. So uh, I drove him over to, it was like Oxen Hill or Temple Hill. So it was like a tall apartment 
high rise type of place. He's getting ready to get out of the car. And he says, Hey, Keith, man. Hey. He goes, Hey, if you know, if you, if you need any Tehran, any cocaine, any weed, any fentanyl, and he, he, and he, uh, he named some other drug. He said, uh, you let me know, all right? You let me know. And uh, I said, dude, I said, I'm not going to eat any of that stuff, man. I said, I don't, I don't use. And uh, he said, yeah, but you might know somebody that you. I said, well, I don't know. He goes, hey, take my number. Take my number. I'm like, dude, I, I don't want your number. He goes, take my number, dude. He said, take my number. I said, all right, all right, all right. What is it? And I'm, I'm putting it in my phone, right? I'm thinking, all right, good. I'm showing him, showing him that I'm taking his number. So I punch it in, and uh, he's not. He goes, uh, and I'm like, all right, it's in there. He's like, now call me. I'm like, man, I don't want to call you. He's like, call me. I said, all right. So I, bing, you know, call him, fire off the call, and bang, he rings. He says, all right, all right. He goes, I got you. I got you. Uh, so he, he entered me in his phone, I guess, and he's like. Uh, and then he gave me his name. And he told me to say to save his name and my and his number. I said, "All right, dude, I got it, man. I got it. I'll let you know." And uh, so then I said, "Take it easy, man." I said, "Be you know, be easy or whatever." I said, "I don't know. Take care." So he gets out. And I'm like, "I don't fucking believe this. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Just absolutely, absolutely crazy." Anyway, so that is my. Um, that's my second uh, time I've had a passenger show me a gun in the car. Um, I wanted to tell you the story uh, <laughs> because it's real life. It's real life. If you drive in a metropolitan urban area, you're going to experience a lot of different things. And in my next video, I'm going to tell you about uh, some of the sex related issues that have come up driving. So uh, stay tuned for that one. Anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>